The dawn of civilization. Primitive. Dangerous. Exciting. The handwriting is on the wall. If the human race is ever going to amount to anything, it needs the most civilized caveman I have ever seen. Ah, oh, look who's come out of his cave. Hey everyone, thanks for joining us. This is James from Cave Dweller Music. Today I have John from Noise Dosage Media and my co-host Brendan. Thanks for coming on the show, John. It's good to have you. Hey, thank you so much for uh, letting me be a, a part of your uh, podcast. It means a lot. Anybody that uh, anybody that does this kind of stuff, I uh, I really admire. Like like I don't know, like doing podcasting, it really means a lot. Just because I see like the amount of work and effort and time it takes you to <laughs> yeah. do these type of things, you know? Oh yeah. <laughs> it's all worth it. I mean, even if, even if like five people listen, we'd still do it. Cause we just love talking to people and meeting new people. Oh yeah. 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 At the end of the day, that doesn't really matter. I mean, as somebody, somebody so famous could hop on your podcast and he, the algorithm could swipe it away. You know what I mean? That don't exactly. Matter. Exactly. Yeah. So do you want to just tell everyone basically what Noise Dosage Media is? Yeah. Um, so basically uh, starting out, I was like a photographer. And uh, at least recently, uh, I've been doing a lot of like videography, like documentary type stuff. Um, I just released like a, a three hour long film with uh, cattle decapitation, napalm death, uh, nuclear assault, a whole bunch of bands. and. Uh, yeah, that's the coolest thing I got going on. But other than that, I have like a podcast where I talk about uh, weird stuff with bands around the world and stuff. Awesome. Um, I mean, with the the documentary is one of the main things we want to talk about today, obviously, because it's a big deal. Uh, it's just come out and Brendan and I both watched it. Um, oh, yeah. 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 And we actually were at Maryland Death Fest where you filmed a lot of our footage. And we, we were like checking it out the whole time looking yeah, for ourselves. Like, Can we find us? <laughs> so did you end up uh, yeah i'm kind of curious about did you end up seeing no or? no we looked i we both we both scrubbed the whole thing and like yeah well i mean i i probably could have gave it a little bit more like like eye listening attention you know what i mean um at some spots but um you know because i was doing other stuff listening to everything you know oh yeah well i mean it's it's three hours long i mean it's like a long-winded it's a long-winded film um but yeah, yeah that's I, good I, though yeah uh but no that's hilarious that i remember like re reaching out and being like yeah man maryland death fest 2022 and you're like wait a second i was here um but that's so cool <laughs> so where are you guys actually from um so i'm based in san diego um but obviously i'm not american um i i moved here from the australia uh just as the pandemic started oh wow huh Why'd you choose? <laughs> Why'd you come to the U.S.? I wonder. Oh, my wife. She's from here, uh, and her family's from SoCal, so that's why I live in uh, San Diego. Okay, that makes sense. Brandon, where yeah. are you from? I'm uh, right outside of uh, Hartford, Connecticut. Okay. Nice. That's awesome. I'm from uh, like Niagara Falls, U.S. side, around there. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah, Buffalo has always had like a a metal scene around here but yeah man it was a crazy hardcore scene in the, like late 90s early 2000s and yeah hardcore has been pretty uh predominant here and it's kind of funny because like it, it's still like popping off like i mean there's still like a huge scene around here uh, i'm not a big awesome. hard yeah i'm not a big hardcore guy but uh, mm -hmm. I, will, I will say that um there is like a really uh, tight community here for that type of music and uh, how did you how, how did you sort of get into like the whole this whole side of things like the, the documentary filmmaking the photography and the podcasting how did that happen um how did i get into it uh well i was at college uh doing like i was going to school for electrical so it was totally different than uh doing camera stuff but anyway i was in like bands and stuff when i was in college and uh i don't know i just went to a lot of shows when uh at that period in my life and i just wanted to try something different and i was like dad i'm broke i got no money 
but I really have like a passion for wanting to do photography. And uh, he was nice enough to get me a, it was like a $300 Canon camera. It was like really shoddy when it came to <laughs> low uh, dark lighting. So it was kind of a, it was an entryway and let's put it that way to yeah. doing photography. And that kind of branched me out into doing videography as of recently, but uh, doing videography is just uh, a weird thing for me because I, I've always wanted to do it, but uh, I didn't really have the connections or knowledge to even talk to, but talk to anybody uh, like of that stature you know i didn't even know how to get in contact with bands for the longest time until i did a podcast so yeah that's kind of the short and sweet of it i did a podcast and my father uh got me a camera <laughs> nice and then you just never stop yeah yeah <laughs> I'm, I'm working on the second one right now so yeah i'm not stopping that's nice that's awesome Did what's you- uh is the second one gonna be the same theme um so it's gonna be the same name but I okay. uh, like half of it is the same concept and then the other half, like half of the topics are the same and half, half are different. So it's going to be a little bit of a twist, but um, yeah, same, same thing. Different it's guests. All, it's all, yeah. A different. Yeah. A totally different guests. Um, and yeah, just a different spin and more knowledge on how to actually film because I'm, okay. st- I'm still new to it, believe it or not. Uh, yeah, I'm, I, the only, the only filming I did or knew how to do was in that footage that you see. Mm-hmm. Like I didn't, I didn't know how to do any of it before. Well, it looks good. Thanks. I mean, I, we, we couldn't tell that from, from that fact. That's awesome. No, yeah, man. Like you so had much. nice lighting and like, um, you know, when you're talking to people, um, you know, it's like, uh, against like a building or something like that, you know, like you had like, it was like good lighting and you could like hear everybody. It was like, it was nice, you know? Thank you. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, I was very particular when it came to that. Like I, I would get like annoyed when I would like bring footage back home and be like, Oh, this is bad. Like I would, there's footage that I have that I just didn't use just because I was a little bit nitpicky, but, um, yeah, that, no, that means a lot. Thank you. Yeah, no, it's good. I mean, you weren't like trying to like go crazy edgy with stuff, you know. You had a good angle on who you were interviewing, and like they, you know, were just answering the questions, and it was cool, man. I, I worked out well. Yeah, I, I don't know. I just think that there's a, I don't know, beauty and simplicity. You know what I mean? Right, right. Uh, and when I, at least when it comes to documentaries, I don't need to see like I don't know, like a lot of, like for an interview. Like of somebody talking, uh, I don't know if I had the equipment. Maybe I would do like two or two angles, but I don't. I don't know. Three or four would be a little bit crazy, you know. Right, right. You lose track of like what the conversation or the the talking points are, you know. With the um, like the in show footage, like outside of Death Fest, the other footage of like concerts and stuff. Did you film all of that yourself too? Was that like footage from bands or? No. Uh, so all the all every every aspect of that film like video wise that that's all stuff i've done i did um okay i just i literally just went to a lot of um i just went to a lot of concerts in my local area uh at the end uh, yeah at the end i remember there was a lot of like local local bands that i would i would go to like a lot of local shows the one place was like a italian restaurant uh <laughs> if you look back it's like an italian restaurant yeah and uh yeah they just host metal shows there in buffalo which is really cool uh <laughs> it's called casa di francesco's a lot of like hardcore bands go there now huh it's awesome do, you, do cool. you think the owners are like just into hardcore music or uh that's a good question well they they must like something about it because when the hardcore bands come they put holes in the walls and they still let them in so i have no <laughs> idea yeah, it, yeah. If you look close, man, those walls are tainted by like huge punch marks and kick marks and all sorts of, I don't know, anger. <laughs> <laughs> what but, um? Who got you into um? Like do uh like your documentary? Like who, who was um? 
the person that got you into uh, that? Like, like, uh, who were you watching before? Ooh, like films? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, films that I, metal films that I've watched. I think. Or like more, like more, less, less like inspired you. You know, like, um, do you have like like a, a a documentarian that you were like into, or? Well, let me think here. Um, you know, when it comes down to documentaries, I think of, uh, <laughs> I like the, uh, the grind, the slaves of the grind documentary with Napalm Death, which is kind mm-hmm. of funny, which is really funny. Cause I have Barney in mind, but, uh, I really like that film. And when it comes down to like documentaries, uh, that was one that like, if I really look back and try to like get down to the nitty gritty of like documentaries and what I enjoy. I think that was a, a really inspiring one to me because it was like very informative, interesting. And, uh, I don't know, like, uh, when it comes down to like super monumental bands and, you know, important bands, uh, they do a lot of interviews, a lot of press. It's like, what else can you, extracts from these bands you know they've given up so right much. they've given up so much in these conversations but that documentary is awesome um and uh, this was after the fact of like filming mine but i watched uh, one recently it's called afropunk have you guys watched okay it? no i've mm-hmm. seen that one um it's about like uh african americans getting into punk when punk was mm-hmm. just starting to pop off and uh it was just explaining well them explaining like their struggles and trials and tribulations with just trying to like fit in with that type of scene right Mm -hmm. and it's obviously not like a a metal documentary but for me that like that's pretty inspiring because it had like a really uh it just had like a story that i like latched on to so some of the best documentaries I, i think like it doesn't even matter if the footage is trash if the story's there, man. Like, it's right. That's all you need, you know. Have uh, apparently uh, so. We, you know, I was talking to you before we were recording how we have our theme week at the moment is Native American stuff, or oh, Indigenous stuff, including Native American stuff. But apparently, there's a documentary called Rumble. Uh, have you seen that one? No, but no. Uh, as you're as you're bringing that up, I just thought of another one. Okay. What? what well. Bring up, bring up that one that you were talking about. What is that? So I haven't seen it yet because I haven't had time and I only found out about it this past week. But apparently it's a documentary about uh, the influence that Native Americans had on rock and heavy metal music. Okay. Mm. Yeah, that sounds cool. Yeah, it does. I'm just going to check that out, I think. I'm looking up uh, the exact title because I don't want to tell you the wrong thing. Okay. But, okay. Yeah, I got it. Um, so AKS Media presents Res Muddle. I watched this one. I watched this one, uh, I don't know, like a year or so ago. It's a mm-hmm. documentary about uh, the metal band I Don't Conform and the vibrant heavy metal scene throughout the Navajo Reservation. That is a really cool Awesome. Like, have you watched yeah. that one? No, I haven't seen that one. That sounds mm-hmm. awesome. I'd love to see that. I haven't uh, either. Yeah, that's a really cool one. Uh, I, I think it's awesome. <laughs> Because the story there is really interesting because, mm-hmm. like, thinking on my youth, uh, the reservation is very similar. Like, where I live, there's not much going on. I mean, mm-hmm. there's, I mean, there's lakes and stuff like that and cornfields. <laughs> but there's not a lot. There's not a lot of, uh, you know, city life. So, right. Res- I, uh, yeah, yeah, it's very similar to my life. I grew up in the country, New Zealand. Uh, in a town that had like 11,000 people, nothing but farms. So I know that feeling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I would highly recommend that documentary just because this, yeah, the, the whole aspect of DIY is portrayed in that too. That's great. Nice. Have you seen um, Until the Light Takes Us? Yeah. Yeah. I've seen that, that. One's, that was one of the first metal documentaries I ever watched. Yeah. You know, there, there's a lot of, uh, I don't know. When it comes to black metal documentaries, those are those are tricky ones because there's a lot of critics and stuff. But when it comes yep. to watching, yeah, anything with black metal, you got to take it with a grain of salt. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> uh, but 
yeah, there was like this new Netflix movie where like it was I don't know. It was like a metal movie, but they had like horse paint on and I was so confused. But I don't know. What what have you it, guys enjoyed? Is you mean that is it like Lords of Chaos or something, that Netflix one? Um uh, no, no, it's a different one. It was like just released. Oh, okay. Okay. But yeah, I, Lords I of Chaos that. is a cool one. I haven't and seen people, that one yet. Okay, yeah. I I mean the short and speed of that film, you know, it's just the story of mayhem. Yeah. And... Oh no, no. There's another one. So I've got them mixed up. There was another Netflix one called something similar. Which is, oh, um... I haven't seen that. It looks cheesy. Yeah. Um... <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I know exactly what. That's the one I'm people, talking about. People are talking about. Yeah, it's it's called. Oh god, it's called Netflix. Metal it looks movie. cheesy. So metal, uh, yeah, metal, like, oh. me, metal lords. That's yeah, the one that, I was thinking. Yeah. That's 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 what I was thinking of. Sorry. Yeah, it's bad. I, I yeah, thought it was going to be bad. It looks like I don't try to judge a book by its cover ever, but I did there, and I'm pretty sure I made the right call. It looks super yeah. cringy, like really cringy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I don't know what to say other than the fact that sometimes these Netflix producers, directors, um, like they take a subject, but they've like if you were like a, a metal fan or like a I don't know if you're into a certain subject you should make a movie about it but if you're not into it don't make a film about it i agree right. <laughs> don't Definitely. yeah don't so, don't yeah. just do it for money <laughs> that's the exact issue that people have with rings of power the you know the ring series it's like there was such a difference in reasoning behind it being made from the original lord of the rings movies to this which is amazon's like hey this is a popular franchise we can make a ton of money from this yeah oh without a doubt i love that movie. i do too that's like my favorite movie trilogy i lo- love mm-hmm. those, those three that is such a good movie now i think about it like my childhood was based off of that me no too. mine too man me too i uh i my birthday is december 31st so when those movies were coming out they came out like the week before my birthday so every year on my birthday i'd see one of those movies yeah at the, that, at, what, at the cinema yeah loved it Dude, do you remember when uh, Lord of the Rings had like a PS2 game? I don't remember the. Yes, uh, there were three of them. It was uh, there was one for each movie, and I feel like they, they were... just came out with them. They were great. I played those. There's the two towers. Uh, you you played as like Legolas, Gimli, and Aragorn. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, those were the be- those are the best, dude. I love those movie those games. Dude. It was like uh, it was like uh, it was like Skyrim. But like at its beginning point, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. It, mm-hmm. it was like pre all these like crazy good storytelling games, you know. So yeah. something something that I am being optimistic about because it, it could potentially be really good. Wetterworks, the company that did all the special effects and animation for the first uh, three Lord of the Rings movies, they uh-huh. weren't involved with Rings of Power because they're currently developing a massive. Uh, from what I understand, open world Lord of the Rings game. So, wow. Wow. I, yeah. yeah. That, that sounds awesome. I, it I, does. I would, I would ho- you know, thinking back, that is one video game like I don't hear anybody talking about. Like Lord of the Rings had it going on when it, it came did. to PlayStation 2. And it had that really good PC series as well, where you, it was the strategy one and you played as the different races and you had to build like armies and stuff. That one was really good too. After this conversation, I'm gonna go home. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna pull out my PlayStation Two. I'm gonna blow up all the dust, and I'm gonna play Lord of the Rings. They had um one of those like um like StarCraft styled games where you had like you know That's the build one. up your fortress and all that. Like yeah, it's uh, it was called Armies of Middle Earth or something, right? Yeah, I think so. Something yeah. in Middle Earth. That was good. That was that was a fun. There was a really old Star Wars version of that that was really good too. Called oh, like yeah. Galact- Galactic Battlefields or something. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was that was spectacular as well. Is there any games? Is there any uh I'm kind of curious. Is there any games that you guys played when you were a kid that led you to this type of music? For me, like mm-hmm. I remember playing like Tony Hawk skater games and there was like little yeah, sn- yeah. little yep. snippets of like weird metal music <laughs> yeah ton of punk too yeah yeah, yeah. 
Um, I think for me, there was Burnout 3, which okay. had like a bunch of really good music. There's a bunch of alternative rock stuff on there and uh, some some heavier stuff. And then uh, obviously the Grand Theft Auto games had the different radio stations. Yeah. Um, and then there was... Uh, God, Halo. Was called? Yeah, Halo. Oh, uh, man. Oh, man. Scarface. Did you ever play Scarface? No, but I played Halo. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I love that game me too i have um i have a lot of uh halo figurines and memorabilia and whatnot i have all the original games like i have them on hard copy i i love master chief yeah i was about to say like that was the pinnacle of video games at least in my that's just my opinion like when yeah. when, ha- when halo was released that was the pinnacle Right. That was and if that was like, the game where every kid was staying up all night, skipping uh-huh. school, not doing homework, and just playing. Uh-huh. Hey, that and, the, and, and the, beating it and, for like the hundredth time, you know, or like and, oh, finding all the skulls, or like oh my god, doing all, every, all the little things. The uh, first Call of Ju- first Call of Duty was like that too. Do you remember when that came out? Mm-hmm. Which one was which one was that? Was that there, World there was. War? Uh, no, it was. Hang on, let's see. Is it the Modern Warfare's? Yeah, that was the one. It was the first Modern Warfare, wasn't it? That like started everything. Um, that was like oh, a lot you... of online gaming stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the one. I'm pretty sure. What was it? Yeah, I remember. Um, I remember like the day. Like I remember the exact moment when uh, my my brother uh, coerced my my. Uh, my dad into getting Call of Duty World at War, and then getting home and watching like limbs getting shot off. Like that game was so, <laughs> that that yeah. game is so vulgar. Like mm-hmm. one of the most brutal video games I've ever played. Still well, to this they day, they had some like wild ass scenes too. Like I can't remember which one it was, but it was um like they'll be like, hey, this this is going to be pretty ridiculous. If you want to skip this, it's okay. Oh, that was the airport and one where you were the terrorist. Where you like slide oh, up in oh, a fucking yeah. airport and shit. My, yeah. Modern Warfare 2. Yeah, yeah, I remember that like, one. Like, what the fuck? You're like, what? What? <laughs> yeah. Man, was, was, it, was like, this like... can't be real. I can't be doing this right now. Like, what? And if you don't shoot the people, then they kill you. So like, you have to do it. You're just like, yep. oh, my God. You're shooting, like, women and children. And you're just like, oh, my God. Like, it's psychologically, like, horrific. And, and the thing is, if you think and it's a video wow. game. Yeah, if you think back like that, like that won't 9, fly nowadays. Not, yeah, like nine eleven happens, and then they release that. Like what? Like <laughs> yeah, I remember right, being right. a kid and being like September eleventh, like that day would hit, and then like you would play Modern Warfare two. You're like, this is not right. Like this is not. This can't be politically correct. Like in, in any way. Like this is yeah. not. It's a matter just of in taste. general. Yeah, yeah, just just in general. Uh, I think it was a fun mission, but at the same time, I was like, why did they have to go this far? Right. Because before the modern, it was Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare was the one that changed everything with the online play. Uh, that game was like a game changer for first person shooters. But before that, uh, do you remember everyone like, used to play? Was the best one. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, do you remember everyone used to play Medal of Honor before Call of Duty, though? Two, two and three. Yeah, Medal of Honor. Yeah, this game's the best. That's a great game. I felt like that was like historically accurate fighting and whatnot, you know? Mm-hmm. There was that one that was in the Pacific that was fighting the mm-hmm. Japanese, and that one was like absolutely awesome. I love that game. Yeah, I had that on uh, PSP. Okay. I mean, which I was P- really PS2. Fun. Yeah. PS2 just had so many good games. That console was like stacked. Yeah, I, I just think like <clears throat> when I think of video games, I just don't play as much as I used to. And I think that's just because, like, yes, the, the quality of video games are getting better. But, like, again, like, even, like, thinking back, like, the, yeah, like, it wasn't as produced and, you know, it wasn't in 4K and the resolution wasn't at the highest. But, like, the right. story the story was there. Mm-hmm. And, like, the... Um, gameplay was fun. It was just fun. Yeah, right. Game, gameplay was just fun, you know? Yeah. I've been well, playing uh, a lot of this uh, single player game called Dead Cells. And it's just like this you get random weapons and 
every time you die, everything like restarts over. So you start no matter if you went like ten levels up and you died. Oh man, then that, you that's... start all the way at the very beginning. Dude, but that sounds like the Dark game Souls. gives mm-hmm. you something um, good to like basically like get you back to where you were. So even though you died and you started at the very beginning, like it gives you these advantages or cool new weapons and things like that. And like, there's like so much stuff to work for. And like, it's just so simple. It's like those, like, I don't know. It's just awesome. This is a great little time killer. And there's like no commitment. You can pause the game, turn the Xbox off. And then like, boom, you turn it on like a day later and you're back where you were. Like it remembers that, you know, it's, it's, it's cool. I think I've turned on my PlayStation once since May. I uh, I just don't play video games anymore. And the reason is, whenever I'm playing video games, I'm thinking, like, oh, I could be doing something for the site. Like, I could be writing a review or right. yeah, doing man. a podcast yeah. or something. And it's like, I, I, feel so, I feel like this is so much more productive. But it's like, at the same time, I don't want this. It's hard to balance it out and not let this become your only hobby. You know what I mean? Um, right. Yeah to be a more well-rounded person. So, so sometimes like, I feel like I need to set boundaries and be like, no, you've done this, like this many hours this week, go do something else. Like for yourself. Yeah. Give yourself a break, bro. It's good. Yeah. I got two kids and you know, like it's wild. Like life is very structured and hectic. And then like, there's times where you're just, you know, when you can kill yourself for like 10 minutes, you're like, all right, I got it. Let's go. Like, boom. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. I, and I think that's, yeah, I, I would say without a doubt, like creatively, um, I put down video games at the same time that I started with my podcast, which is kind of hilarious that you relate because yeah, definitely, uh, I, I think the same way. And mm-hmm. uh, I don't know, even though, you know, podcasts, you know, it's a lot of it is passion and this, that, the other thing. But sometimes video games, you just get, you like, I don't know. It's one of those things where you just do and you don't mm-hmm. think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? And with podcasts, at least like you're present and you're learning things and you're, you know. Yeah, yeah. Like, I don't know. They're just a little bit more entertaining for me. And like. Yeah. And yeah. like for, for me as well, with like writing reviews and stuff, like I could spend an hour playing a video game or I could knock out a review and like the video game is fun and it relaxes me, but it doesn't benefit anyone else. I know that if mm-hmm. I write a, re- a review for a band that say maybe some people will check out this dude's music and he'll appreciate it. You know what I mean? So it's like, right. I feel like it's a more productive, more beneficial to society. <laughs> he is in my time, if that makes sense. Yeah. It, it, and that's the thing. Like now, at least recently I've realized a lot of like within the last year or so, it's like just me, like instead of me making music for my, you know, for myself, like mm-hmm. I put a lot of, time into you know pushing other people forward you know what i mean and it feels good just to be able to say hey like you know this this was specifically for you know you know the band because i respect what they're doing you know they mean a lot you know Mm -hmm. but yeah any time spent on what you're doing what i'm doing uh right it's it's well worth it you know i think so i i never feel like i'm wasting my time Sometimes I get like frustrated by the algorithm. I'm like, man, I spent all the time writing that review and like six people saw it or something, but that's not why I do it ultimately. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. yeah. It, would, it would just be nice. That's, if- that's what I'm saying, man. Like, I, as I said earlier, you can have Lady Gaga on your podcast, right? But mm-hmm. if, the, if the algorithm, if the algorithm doesn't catch it the right way, like nobody's going to see it. Exactly. Um, it's like right. sometimes it'd be nice to put the work in and not have Zuckerberg fuck you in the ass type thing, but it is what it is. <laughs> yeah. It, it's like the casino, man. I'm telling you. Mm-hmm. But yeah. It, yeah. For sure. We like YouTube. Like we have a YouTube channel and like I upload people's music, like bands and like uh, artists and stuff. And for instance, like I, I uploaded one video the other day and it got over 3,000 views. And then I uploaded a video the next day and it got 12. I'm like exactly how yeah and, and luckily like the documentary the one i'm doing um people people share it you know uh, yes. i think the i think the hardest part i think the hardest part about doing any type of media or press related stuff uh is you know 
not pushing too hard. Like, I mean, and not being like annoying. Like when I first started, I would like share like a, a lot of things I was like proud of to all my friends and this, that, that thing. And then I realized I'm like, if people, if people really enjoy what I'm doing, like they'll just do it themselves, you know? Yeah. Um, like just being, uh, just being passive on that kind of that stuff. You know, I, mm-hmm. right. I, I don't know. That, that's what I've learned. I mean, you're right. Definitely. <laughs> I feel like sometimes we're like, you know, we're like talking about music or this and that with like random people. And then I'll be like, Oh, you guys, yeah. Check out like our, our stuff here. And like, we, we talk to bands and we talk to label owners and whatnot. And it, it's pretty cool. Like it's fun. You know, we, we, we like the first, you know, few episodes we did were uh, silly, but then uh, we found like this, this kind of nice like style. And then, um, a lot of people, I think, have been like, "All right, I'll check it out." I like, why not? You know? And yeah. Well, what a uh, well. Let's put it this way: um, What type of people do you like to talk to? Like, I mean, like I, I talked to musicians for a uh, very long time, and then I started branching out into like directors and uh, you know other avenues like photographers in the music industry and stuff like that. Mm. What, what do you guys have fun um, doing? Musicians definitely. Record label owners is a, another big one. Yeah, I've only, yeah. Done that. I've only done that like twice. Okay. Uh, yeah, and I was one, gonna say the, I think you're the first like media person we've kind of interviewed. No, second, because we had um, uh, what's his name from Metal Forge on the other week as well. Oh, you're, oh, right. Yeah. you're right. So yeah, the so Metal Forge. what I'm trying to do at the moment it's a new it's a it's a new idea I had and it's something oh. I, you're the second guest we've had on who fits this description is to get a network developed essentially between different podcast hosts and have us on each other's shows so that we can kind of share audiences and then also get to know each other. And, you know, it's like, there's not that many middle podcasters. It'd be great to have like a a stronger community bond. Without a doubt, man. And I think it's cool that you are doing that because like, um, I've, I've within the last like couple months, I've reached out to like a bunch of metal podcasts and stuff. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I feel like, a lot of the people have um, agreed to talk to me because they do the same thing. You know, it's just, it's just right. natural. It just naturally works. But like, imagine if you started doing like a weekly thing where you just got like <laughs> metal podcast together. Like, you know how fun that would be like a week, yeah. like a round table really type thing. Yeah. That'd yeah, be and, sweet. Yeah. And, and I've joined one of those before uh, Vox and hops. It's the, mm-hmm. The vocalist of Cryptopsy, he has like a, nice. he has like a, a round table thing, and it was so cool. Like he had a round table, and they just talked about beer for like an hour. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, I think you guys should go go forward with that. It'd be awesome. I would I would be there. Come on. Oh yeah, dude. we should yeah. Uh, def- we should set that up and get like a <laughs> bunch of different podcast hosts together and put together our own round table series, and then have other guests come on that. That'd be sweet. Yeah. I mean, I think, we kind of do that with ourselves too, you know? So it's like, it only makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you could always do a cool thing where like, um, I, I remember like I, I invited the vocalist of Havoc on my podcast. Mm-hmm. And All right. And nice. He, and he was like, he's like, do you mind if we pod like pod share this? I'm like, what does pod share mean? And he's like, why don't I like take the file too and put it on my podcast? so nice that's a good idea so like you know it was like a shared episode so everybody shared it you know Mm -hmm. that's a really good idea which was awesome because he's got a a bigger fan base because he's in a a havoc that band's awesome (laughs) yeah they're they're pretty big as far as thrash goes Mm -hmm. but uh yeah what uh, what would be cool as well is like because we always do like an end of year podcast to wrap up the year and stuff just to get like a bunch of other podcast hosts on as guests and then uh yeah kind of talk about our yearlies oh my god run, run through everyone's like albums of the year type thing at the end of the year pretty, be pretty fun conversation i yeah, know awesome. my change is weekly dude mine too but i have some staples like i have like i always do a top 20 because I, I literally can't do a top 10 but there's always like 10 out of the 20 stay firm and then the other 10 are like fluid right <laughs> yeah it's just too much good music these days. It's crazy. It's stupid. Oh man. Oh, it's dumb. It's so dumb. 
I just we, we, fell in love with this like band that um, like has a completely different kind of sound to what I normally listen to. And, you know, it was just like, wow, like they put on an awesome live show. And then, um, yeah, just like, and I, and I started diving through everything else they had and like, they're relatively new. And I was just like, these guys are fucking awesome. You know, like, holy shit. We're lucky to have these guys, you know, but it's something that like, I don't normally, I wouldn't like, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I only found him because I saw him live and that's it. You know, like I like the algorithms and of the world and this and that, like, I don't know how long it would have taken me to find him without like, oh, literally, yeah. you know, like it's wild. Yeah. that That's a funny thing. That's a funny topic in and of itself because I, I feel like a lot of the music that I've found over the years is just me just showing up to shows and then seeing the openers and the openers I ended up enjoying a lot. And then I saw the opener of that, that, that band when they came through, <laughs> it was like a, right, was, right, right. it was like an ever flowing thing of uh, checking out new bands. Yeah. But, um, are you guys in any type of projects or you just, do you just do the podcast? Um, we're not we're not musical, unfortunately. So well, our way of contributing to the scene is to review, interview, and host music type yeah. stuff, type thing. So yeah, no, we're not in any bands. Yeah, no, we make. I, a, I always get cur- yeah. curious of that. Yeah, we make jokes about being in like a grindcore band called like Trash Bag Dad Bod, <laughs> and then like <laughs> we just kind of record ourselves throwing up and like put it to some heavy bass, you know, like and a chainsaw in the background. Yeah, <laughs> but that's really like, yeah, that's where we're at with it. <laughs> I, I I play around. I, I was playing around for a while with making like some ambient noise stuff, like uh, like sound uh, horror movie soundtrack stuff, um, which is pretty fun. Um, but I, I just I haven't done that in a minute. It's been a bit. Yeah, that's cool. I I don't know. Do Do you guys listen to metal like on a regular, or do you switch it up? Because at, at least recently, like. If I'm around metal a lot, like, I, I don't know. I just have been listening to a lot of, like, indie, like, I don't know. Well, like I switch indie. it up constantly. It's, uh, oh, yeah. it's, a, it's, so, it's a mixed bag. Yeah, it all depends, right? Like, I feel like my uh, music changes through seasons, you know, like, where it's, like, nice out, this and that, listening to more, like, indie kind of stuff and this and that or whatever. And then um, I'll be, like, right now I've been listening to a lot more, like, kind of like stoner rock and um like stoner metal and things of that like nature that's like a little bit more long-winded and like necessarily not as like fast and brutal you know and then um i feel like once the winter comes around i'm just like hunker down into like a black metal kind of crazy phase where like you just like want to hear everybody just scream and lots of like ambient noise yeah I was about to say, like, as funny as it sounds, like, I'm definitely, when it comes wintertime, like, <laughs> that, yeah, black metal, man. It's just a, it's a funny it's, thing. Like, I, uh, what else is better than listening to Dark Funeral when it's snowing outside? Come on, man. Right? Or, like, <laughs> um, some, like, that new White Ward album is pretty good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. White Ward is awesome. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. And shout out to Ukraine. It came out of nowhere too. That album was everyone was like, "Dude, where these yeah. guys come from? This is crazy good." Um, they have yeah. like a few. Um, record. I feel like they have got a few things out. They do, but this is the one that like everyone was talking about. This one compared yeah. to the other stuff. Oh, it's yeah. good. It's like it, it's got like um, it checks all like the little black metal marks, you know, like the ambience, like the the brutalness, like it's got like the blasty beats. It's got like every, you know, it's just it's got some jazz stuff yeah um, yeah exactly it's great they they hit they like like i said they checks all the marks it's good i think on a oh sorry go ahead i was gonna say what do you guys think of watching i never really appreciated them until this album to be honest like i always kind of thought they were overrated and a little generic and then okay. i listened to like but i never sat down and listened to a whole album that was my problem yeah i, I, I just had bits and pieces like ah. Eh. And then I, I listened to this new album in full and I was like, okay, this is actually pretty good. Yeah. You're like, okay, I'm down to get pig's blood thrown at me. Yeah, let me get, exactly. Let me get out of the show. Come on. 
Right, exactly. I've, I've signed the will. <laughs> <laughs> the release form. Uh, <laughs> That's really funny. Yeah, I love them. They're they're number one for me. Nice. What's what is uh what is your favorite bands? Give me give me. I've a been for like Garia. Uh, Garia is um. Oh shoot! Okay. Yeah, I, I like them. that a lot for like the black metal stuff. Um, I've been listening to that their newest one that just came out. Um, I don't remember the name of it. Um, that but that pops out into my head since we were just talking about black metal. But I don't know. I've been loving the new Acid Witch a lot. Okay. All right. That's what I talking, to listen to more. Are we talking like all time favorite or current favorite? Oh, just as all time favorite band. Uh, oh, I'll, yeah. That's definitely not my all time stuff. But like that for me, that those are current current listenings that I've been digging a lot. All time favorite for me, it's uh, anything Tom G. Warrior is involved with. So like the Triptychon albums, the final like the Celtic Frost, guys, uh, Celtic Frost Korea, Hellhammer, all that stuff's like my favorite music. Oh, okay. Okay. Now, non-black metal, what are you guys into? Non-black metal. I like a lot of like stuff. Um, oh, man. It goes, it goes on and on and on. Um, <laughs> uh, Pink, Pink Floyd is a big one of mine. And Jethro. Yeah, like I 70, love Pink Floyd. Yeah, 70s uh, prog rock. Uh, 70s prog rock. It's like outside of metal, my favorite music is 70s prog rock. So my, yes, my vibe. yes. My you vinyl collection is mostly that. Yes, yes, is fantastic. Yeah. Jethro, Je- Jethro Tell, um, uh, at Traffic, all those guys, absolutely awesome. Yeah, my all dad stuff. brought me to see uh, Jethro Tell on my 18th birthday. Nice. Oh, that's that was cool. fucking fun. Okay, so like, if, we're, if we're talking about Pink Floyd, I'm going to bring up a very controversial statement, but I think that Animals is the best record of all time. Dude, One. I just listened to it the other day. Didn't it come like on an anniversary of some sorts? I have no idea. I just love that album so much. I'll so cry. I'm not gonna like I'm not gonna disagree because it is like it's it's close for me. Animals is a very close second, but for me it's um wish you were here. And then animals. Oh, those, oh, those, are, those are my okay. th- those are my top two by far. Okay. I, I would agree. Yeah. Those are definitely good. They're close though. Um I just think that like Shine on you, crazy diamond is what tips it for me. That song is just too good. Like it's mm. it's too good. Yeah, you know, thinking back, yeah, I, I would totally agree. The one thing I can never figure out is how they managed to come up with that album cover. Like I know when, when it was released, like how did they even make that? You know. Okay, so I could tell you that because I went to the Pink Floyd exhibit in LA. Um, oh, okay. And uh, so it was a guy in a suit. Uh, that was flame retardant and he had like some type of uh, flame accelerant that didn't burn hot. Uh, so I guess like it, it, it burned, but like it didn't burn him uh, until it was on for a certain amount of time and then it would catch. Um, so they, they had heaps of shoots and he was just on fire constantly, just on and off and on and off and on and off. Just to get that yeah. picture. Yeah. How long did it end up taking? Crazy. I, photography. I, 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 it was all done in one day. It was like a single shoot, but I, I guess mm-hmm. like, couple of takes the, the guy was on fire a lot uh <laughs> he's like i'm getting hot guys can you uh <laughs> oh that's boiling <laughs> and so another thing that's similar to that is uh you know the album cover holy diver for dio yeah uh, I, I yeah let me look that up real quick so it's got the demon in the background and then it's got um the priest in chains in the water so I went oh, to East- yeah, I'm sorry. I, I, yes, yeah, I, I know which one. So about. I just, I just saw the Dio documentary two weeks ago, and apparently, oh, check that out. Yeah. dude, see it. It's like a ten out of ten. It's phenomenal. Um, and uh, th- that's based on a photograph, not the the the, the, the picture, the, the painting. Um, and they actually took put a dude in a priest costume, put him in chains, and threw him in the water. And they they show the like a bunch of stuff from it in the documentary, and the guy was like half drowning and like get the shot get the shot <laughs> like bobbing it up and down out of the water and then he couldn't get out of the water because the rocks were slippery and the chains are pulling him down and stuff so it's pretty funny Dio documentary i didn't even know <laughs> <start> it. Thing. <laughs> it, it was just at the cinema it just came out like two weeks ago it's it very very mm-hmm. good like uh, one of the best documentaries about like an individual person i've seen yeah okay. yeah, yeah I'll check that out. the only too. thing I, I would say is like i i didn't even think about this until i had a conversation with someone afterwards 
uh, who also reviews music. And I was like, what do you think? And he, he brought up a good point is that they, they kind of derail uh, when they get to the nineties and kind of like talk about how uh, grunge killed metal in the nineties, but like Dio was still putting out killer music that whole decade. And they kind of mm. ignore it brushed over that to make the other point. And it's like, but th- those nineties albums are pretty obscure. So I get why they did it. But it's like I, I I didn't even think about that as a criticism. But that's that's my only critique. Everything else, like apart from that, ten out of ten. So now comes the wolves, man. It's so Dio dreamers never die. So is it just a bunch of interviews of people talking about Dio? So it's interviews about of like people who knew him. It's interviews with him, like compiled. Uh, oh, it's, okay. It's li- a, a bunch of live footage from like his biggest shows with like Black Sabbath, but his solo career with Rainbow. Um, yeah love rainbow it's behind the scenes stuff it's it's everything it's it's a phenomenal compilation of different types of footage wow rob halfer tony iomi yeah jack black geezer butler hell yeah this is awesome yeah it's yeah, it's, check- it's great definitely check it out and it goes like right from his childhood because i i actually didn't know this he started out singing tom jones style music like um before he got into rock and metal in the fifth in the fifties, he was like singing that type of music, like um Beach Boys, Tom Jones type stuff. And then he got into like psychedelic rock stuff, which was like uh I'm trying to think who to compare them to. Gentle giant type stuff. Like not, not as weird, but like that sort of soft, like uh psych rock sound. And then he got into Rainbow, and that's where he like kind of came into his own after uh a uh, car accident where his partner who wrote all the music with him died from a drunk driver hitting them head on. Whoa. I didn't know about that. No, me either. So there's a, there's a lot of stuff in there. I didn't know about um, mm. that. You, and, and if you see it, like just a tips, if you see it at the cinema, stay after the credits, there's a bunch of extra footage. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to, uh, uh, obviously it's probably not free. So I'm going to watch this tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you for the uh, recommendation. No worries. Dio, dreamers never die. <laughs> yeah, it kind of just makes you appreciate like two things. One, what like a unique dude he was. He was like just he was a one of a kind guy. And two, how powerful the dude's voice was. And how it never faltered or gave up his whole career. Like he was like mm-hmm. in his 70, 70s and recorded like one of his best albums. That like Heaven or Hell one was phenomenal. And he was like <laughs> it was in his seventies. I mean, yeah, it's just it's impressive. Not many people can say that. Yeah. Ooh, I was gonna say another great album, uh Clutch. You guys clutch fans? Oh um, Cl- uh, I'm not, not a clutch Sunrise on Slaughter Beach. Yeah, no, Clutch doesn't do much for me. Uh I thought it's kind of fun. Um have you guys watched the Ozzy documentary? Yeah, that, that was, one was great. That was a that fun one. That was good too. That was kind I, of like I love seeing Ozzy. Like Me too. <laughs> I didn't know how poor he grew up. Like he was super poor. Yeah. yeah, and going back to your first question, like uh, about like documentaries, I got into that was one that I was I was a huge Ozzy fan when I was younger, and like mm-hmm. watching uh, watching him come up from like nothing and mm-hmm. turn into the biggest rock star of all time, basically is like I don't know. It was a that was a great story, you know. It was honestly, it's going to be a pretty sad day when he passes. Like, it's going to be a huge loss to the world, middle world at least. Music world, yeah. Van, I don't know Eddie, Eddie Van Halen. Yeah, uh, Eddie Van Halen yeah, was pretty, that pretty uh, tough one for me, man. Yeah, that was that was hard. And then for the one that affected me as well was um, like uh, Travis from um, Black Dahlia. Black Dahlia dying because I I actually met the guy and he was like the nicest dude. And it's like it came so out of nowhere because like obviously he wasn't sick or anything. So that that caught me off guard and that hit me. Yeah. Well, did you see the documentary I did? It's dedicated to him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. Cause I don't know. Like some of the footage, that was like the last tour he went on before right. he passed away. Right. Um, I don't know. It's that was one that hit me too because growing up, that was like a a band that I don't know. They were always kind of like a staple. Every year I would see the Black Dolly murder, you know? Yeah. Right. Put on a sick show. Yeah, they just put on a sweet show and leave, and yeah, they'll be back next year type thing. And yeah, I, I don't know. They were pretty monumental in me getting into this kind of stuff. And like the thing was, no one had a bad word to say about him. 
Like he was just such a good dude. And he, he always had time for fans and stuff. Like I, I remember just, he was hanging out with us after a show and taking photos and stuff. Like he's just a nice, super good dude. Yeah. And that, and like outside of Black Dahlia, he did a lot for the underground scene, which was what I really appreciated about him. Like the fact that he would write reviews of underground bands that he liked, or he purposely pit unknown bands for tours that he thought deserved exposure and stuff. So yeah. Yeah. It's no, and that's, that's another important thing about him. Um, there, There's a band near me called Undeath. Oh, yeah. Great. I've yeah. seen them in December. <clears throat> yeah. So basically, I'm hoping they come around our, my way too. Basically, when I was in a band, uh, we, I played with Undeath in front of like three people. Like, <laughs> like, uh, like, there was like three people, and like, I was watching Undeath. Like, that was their first show. And uh, I remember seeing that band. And then, like, I think it was like a couple of years down the line, uh, they're playing with the Black Dolly Murder because of Trevor. Like, Trevor, like, took them under his wing and, like, mm-hmm. you know, gave them the opportunity to get on that huge tour. And I was like, wow, like, Trevor really does support like these like underground bands you know and, i didn't know that about undeath that's interesting because i thought they got big because they were on maggot stomp i don't i don't even know if they were on maggot stomp i think they weren't i thought i swear they were maybe i'm wrong hang on let me check well out. i i don't know if they're on maggot stomp i just know that they had like a review by anthony fantan man anthony and fantano uh-huh and they went on tour with Black Dahlia, and then they blew up. That's all I know. And, and obviously, their music is awesome, you know. But um, I think it's prosthetic. I was thinking of pros- they're on prosthetic. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah, prosthetic. I was gonna say. I, <laughs> I don't oh, know if it's it's two hundred. It's two hundred stab wounds. I'm thinking of. Um, so I'm seeing Ooh. them. I'm seeing on death play with 200 stab wounds. That's why I got them confused. Dude, um, that they, is, that tour, uh, James is coming, uh, November 11th for me. Nice. You have to go to that. Yeah. It's, I, yeah. Um, it's an hour drive, but or an hour, 20 minutes. Yeah. It's on death, on death, 200 stab wounds and enforced. And then a bunch of other awesome bands. Yeah. I was um, going to say, I hope you bring up, uh, Phobophilic, but I don't know if you know. Yes, them. that's that's them. Yeah, that's the other band. I, I forgot who it was. Yes, Phobophilic is also playing, and someone else. Phobophilic is, a, is yeah, it is. There's yeah, a there's a, fucking... there's a Ooh. fifth band as well. Yeah, well, well, I would definitely recommend. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna be there in December. They're gonna be playing. they I think the last show they're playing in Rochester. And uh, yeah, and I, can't, I can't wait, man. Because I've been too. It's gonna be so good for a long time. I've been wanting to see 200, 200 stab wounds for a long time. So, oof, yeah, man, I, 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 I gotta make that happen for myself. Yeah, oh, like, that's and then the week after that, um, vomit fourth. That's the fifth band, vomit fourth. Oh, they're on that tour. Yeah, undeath, two hundred stab wounds, enforced, vomit fourth, and phobophilic. Wow, that's okay. stacked. As twenty, I, my tickets, like, my local tickets, are twenty five bucks. I was like, come on, that's like as if you wouldn't go to that. Yeah. Yeah, no, without a doubt, I would pay. I would pay twenty five dollars just to see Phobophilic. <laughs> yeah, I, and I'm not even saying it. I would pay twenty five dollars to see any of those bands. Yeah, same. Any of them. Dude, his like... horse was sick um, at the Maryland Death Fest. Yeah, yeah, we met the uh, vocalist off after the show. He's a super nice dude. I was yeah. gonna say. I was gonna say. What? Where were you guys at Maryland Death Fest? Where were you guys? Uh, what were you guys yeah. checking out? We were in the VIP area. Um, so we, that's probably why we didn't end up in the footage but we checked what, out everyone vip what there was vip at maryland death fest say what yeah 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 so you know that big fence area that goes along the side of the stages yeah we were with uh, the bouncers basically it's right behind there but it's where all the bands hang out so like you get to hang out with all the musicians and stuff and then yeah, you get to go r- we, right up to the stage where the barricades are you can be in front of the barricades what? we didn't pro- realize it at the time but we were like hanging out with immolation talking to them and being like yeah what's up man? blah 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 you know and it's like or not emulation yeah uh, imprecation sorry yeah and um oh, and yeah, then, it was- there, there was a private toilet and private bar in there too mm-hmm. how much did you have to pay to get vip i think it, i think it was like a hundred a hundred a hundred and twenty extra or something it's like oh i don't know because it was a gift it was a gift for my 30th birthday from my wife and my whole family and her family it was like a joint present from everyone so and me and him yeah he he's so he surprised uh 
all my friends and family knew for like four or five months. Or Dude, something. it was How the hardest like, thing to keep secret. And all kept it from me. And my wife pranked me and gave me these fake tickets to like an annual pass at Disneyland. <laughs> and I was like, oh, th- <laughs> thanks. Thanks. This is sick. Uh, I was like trying to be polite. <laughs> and then on my actual birthday, she's like, I have to play this video. And it's like all my friends and family being like, happy birthday. And then she's like, here's your real present. And then it was like the VIP tickets for me and Brendan to go to uh, Maryland Death Fest. Because him and I had never met in real life before. We'd always we just talked online and like over the podcast and stuff. So it was our first time hanging out. We had like five days in uh, Maryland, hung out the first yeah. day, went to, went to bars and stuff, had some fun. And then did the, the, the rest of the festivals. It was great. It was honestly the best time. It was yeah. so good that that's awesome man because like i mean uh i don't know that that whole experience is, uh, was a very good time for me because like I, yeah. I didn't really i didn't really get into traveling until i started going to festivals as of like a couple like two years ago and uh i don't know maryland death fest like I, there was like a whole bunch of friends that like we basically just jumped in a car hopefully made uh, like we hope we made it there like it was like a really like beat up <laughs> a beat up <laughs> car and uh yeah we made it there um i just remember i just remember like scootering around maryland mm-hmm. like like i don't know like between between venues i was like scootering uh, <laughs> It was really funny. Do you do you remember the one day where it just started downpouring? Yeah, that was day two. Yep, obituary yeah. played that night. Oh no, uh, we we missed day one technically. It was day day three technically, but day two of Edison lot. Yeah, that that, that was a, <laughs> that was a good day. Other than the fact that I remember it started downpouring, and I went on this excursion back to my Airbnb in the the rain. It was like downpouring, and it was so sketchy. I was like, the streets are like. There's nobody out. It's downpouring. And this is like, I, I felt like I was a part of some like horror movie. Yeah. Murder, <laughs> murder City. Yeah. Were you, were you there when that barricade came down at, uh, because they, what happened was they moved a obituary to uh, that other venue, Power Plant. And they, then they cut people off. They're like, oh, you can't come in. There's too many people. And like, it, there was tons of space. So people just, started pushing the barricades down the bouncers like holding it back and then they just said let it go and it collapsed and everyone poured over it yeah i don't i don't know i just remember uh i don't know i just remember the security trying to trying to keep everything under control but didn't i uh (laughs) yeah they they were just like um all right let them through and then people picked up the (laughs) gate turned them sideways and then marched on through they were pretty on point though for like people acting out. Like we, I, I got on camera a dude being knocked out. Like I was, yep. I could tell it was going to happen. He was like super sloppy, barely conscious, and like bumping into people. I was like, that dude's going to get knocked out. So I filmed him, and yeah, straight straight away, boom, out cold. Um, and then like the the bouncers immediately charged in, grabbed the dude, knocked him out, like and dragged him out. But it was it was an accident. Like the whole thing was an accident. He was just. Mm-hmm throwing fists the guy stumbled into his fist because he was wasted and just well out cold yeah that those are two bad combos man yeah now did you guys see uh uh skeletal remains we no. did not we did not but I've, i have seen them before okay because i was gonna say if you went to go see them i was i was on the stage for primitive man and skull uh skeletal remains. that was day oh. one right I don't even remember. Yeah, we, we, man we, Thursday. We were at bars and eating foods. We didn't get tickets to that because uh, it's like we didn't buy tickets uh, when it first started being sold because I didn't even plan to go. And then my wife like surprised me with it, but it was too late that day. It was sold out and I couldn't find tickets for it anyway. Yeah, I mean, that's what I did. So dude. Hard. I was on like Facebook Marketplace, not make Marketplace. I was on like the group chat and mm-hmm. I was like sending money to people, hoping like it was an admission ticket getting ripped off yeah. yeah i was like i was like i hope this is a ticket like yeah it was sketchy what? i i know for a fact next time i'm gonna buy like the four-day ticket like right when they announce oh yeah it. us us too so we're planning like way ahead this time we've got like a whole group together we're gonna book accommodation like 11 months out like gonna buy the four-day pass immediately get the vip like it's yeah we're making it happen but it's yeah, like we have, we, there's heaps of time it's 2024 
I right. thought it was, I thought there was going to be one in 2023. No, no. not not in the US. Um, so I guess they can't. They're ending uh, UK Death Fest permanently and folding the money into um, Maryland Death Fest, and then the next one's going to be 2024. And it's going to be apparently massive. Okay, cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, I'm all for it then. Yeah, heaps mm-hmm. of time to plan it out. I am all for that. Yes. Have you it's been a- to uh, Have you been to uh, Psycho Las Vegas? Yes. Uh, is it, is that any? How's that? It was. That was actually the last festival I went to. Um, okay. I don't know how to explain it other than the fact that like those two festivals combined, I will probably go every year. Okay. <laughs> Psycho Las Vegas was a, a awesome experience. I went by myself, um, but I think it, I, I think it was kind of a good thing though because like i wanted to see so many bands Mm -hmm. and i had to do a lot of like running around back and forth and stuff like that but it wasn't um it wasn't uh i don't know it was well organized like everything was Mm -hmm. on time but if i'm gonna pitch it to you and like if i'm gonna pitch it to you i'm just gonna say that uh there's like a there's like an in-ground pool and everybody Mm -hmm. was just like everybody was moshing in the pool like I don't know. It was like really funny. Like, like there was like a circle pit in in the pool, and like the bands were getting off the stage and like jumping in, and people were throwing each other in. Like, it was just chaos, dude. And I loved it. <laughs> That's awesome. Because we were thinking of going to that next year, but then there's this festival called Monolith on the Mesa. I don't know if you've heard of that yeah. one. I haven't heard of that one, though. No. That that's new. So this, this was the, I'm pretty sure this is the first year, right, Vernon? Yeah. Um. The reason we're thinking of going to that is because our site could potentially be a sponsor for it, um, okay. which is something we're trying to make happen. So if that's mm-hmm. the case, we're going to try and make that happen. And we have like a friend of ours is uh, one of the coordinators of it. Um, and then a bunch of bands we know who had on the podcast and stuff play it. So we kind of want to yeah. go just to hang out with people we know and uh, or involved with the on festival. Our, our um, mental health charity sampler. Yeah, so it's like that would be. A, we, we t- we're kind of thinking maybe we should do that because it'd be a more personal experience to get to hang out with these people we've never met but always wanted to type thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that that sounds awesome, man. Give uh, a I shake don't... of the hand and a good thank you. <laughs> Not really. I'll send you the details for that one if you end up wanting to go because it's it's actually really cheap and it's in. Uh, New Mexico, it's like Albuquerque, so it's actually like accommodation is not expensive either. So, mm-hmm. huh. yeah, I have to check that out. Yeah, send me the link. What one, one that I wanted to bring up? Um, Fire on the Mountain, I think it's called. Yes, I always wanted to go to that. That looks awesome. Yeah, that that's the one that like uh, I'm probably without a doubt the next one that comes through I'm going to go to because like I've been told about that festival so many times. Mm-hmm. Same. And, and I was like, I was like, dude, like it doesn't get better than that. Like, drive out to the middle of nowhere to listen to music and like with no distractions. Right. Like, like the scenery's crazy. Yeah, and that's what I've been told. Like the scenery is crazy. Like there's like mountains. There's like a f- fire. Like a whole bunch of crazy things. The lineup. The lineups. Like I'm looking at the lineup now. Uh, you got uh, Wolves in the Throne Room, Yob, Wayfarer, Yob. Uh, Eternal Champion, Woven Hands, Visigoth, uh, Panopticon. Yeah, some mm-hmm. good stuff there. Now, now, are you talking about the last one, or is there a new one? Uh, this one, when is this? The one that just happened in 2022. This is July 2022. Okay, because I was going to say, I don't think that they've announced anything for the next one. Yeah, this, yeah. Is, on the, yeah, this is this one. So, but it's, yeah. uh, it's, in, so it's in Wyoming, right? I have no, I don't know the details other, other than the fact that people have swayed me into going. <laughs> I like, I've looked at pictures and I'm just like, this looks like a movie. Like, this, looks- uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, I just checked, it's in uh, Teton Wilderness. So, you know, the National Park Grand Tetons, like the big mountain range. Okay. It's right by that, I guess. So, it's, it's like that massive backdrop of this huge, epic mountain range coming out of Wyoming. So, that'd be sick. That sounds like so much fun, man. It does. Yeah, I want to do that. <laughs> That's hilarious. So I, I would assume that we're going to run into each other then. Yeah, some, one year we'll, we'll go to that yes. one year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. But either way, we'll see I you mean, at Maryland. If we Death haven't Fest. already in some odd way over at Maryland, you know, like I gotta double check that footage. Like I'm sure we saw each other. Yeah. Well, I was just I don't know. I was kind of uh I don't know. You'll have to like go online and look at my website and see what I look like. Maybe you saw me. <coughs> I kind of fit it. I I I'm a typical like long hair guy with a battle jacket. <laughs> <laughs> and a camera so i don't know uh probably fit in with everybody well next year uh 2024 we will meet up in uh at the next one so no yeah, plan, pl- plan for that mm-hmm, mm-hmm. i think it'll be a ton of fun man it's it's, it's definitely gonna be sweet yeah I especially might, uh, to get the crew and yeah, bring it bring them come on let's go <laughs> Get the, the gang. The gang's all here. Uh, yeah. Okay. So we have about twenty minutes left. Uh, is there anything we want to talk about that we haven't touched on yet? Oh, uh, I don't know. I think some of the. I don't know. I, I would say the funniest parts or like some of the the coolest things that I would bring up about the documentary is like if you were to ask me about a certain guest, I could tell you like a, a funny Ooh. story about the the interaction I had. Tell me about. The drunk drummer who lost their band. The drunk drum. Wait. Oh. Oh yeah, man. Uh, Chris <laughs> from uh, Skeletal Remains. I was. I don't know if you like when you watched that footage. Uh, uh, if you, did you hear any laughing? Because I like couldn't keep it together. I I don't think so. I don't I recall any, but I was definitely like, oh my god, damn, dude. Yeah. Shit. I, I think what's even funnier is the fact of like being that person, being like the the drunk person and listening back like in a documentary, like your friend talking about you about it, like that. I think that that's that's the pinnacle of like hilarious. Uh, the, yeah, right. Oh, that's like yeah. That's that, it's also kind of kind of suck. <laughs> like oh, yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. suck that day. Shit. But it's all right. No, I think. Uh, a fun something hilarious about Chris in that conversation. Um, I, I will say, uh, <laughs> when it comes down to skeletal remains, the funniest thing about our interaction was the fact that there were like various occasions where we could have filmed together, but it didn't work out. But when it did, like it was like perfect. We were in like a a perfect room, perfect lighting, perfect like audio level, like it. It was the last. It was the last footage I got, like last interview I got for the documentary, and it couldn't have been better. Let's put it that way. Like <laughs> it was the easiest. Like every other interview I did, like I had to go down like dark alleyways. I had to like find a quiet room after a show, where like skeletal remains with Chris. Like I just walked into a perfectly set room, and it was like ready to go. That's awesome. It's funny. I was like, this is a wild story. I was like, what? Yeah. And and then to top it off, like, uh, Chris, like, was great for the documentary because, like, he had, like, so many really funny stories and cool things about him, you know, starting that band. And, like, the fact that, like, how DIY his band is, like, how he does a lot of the management and stuff like that. Did you catch Mm -hmm. that? Yeah. 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 That's definitely sweet. Yeah, he's a he's a wealth of knowledge, you know. Who else are you guys thinking of? Oh man, I, I actually wanted to ask a different question just before we like. What do you think, Brendan? Is yeah. there anyone that you wanted to get on the documentary, like really wanted Ooh. to get that you couldn't get? Ooh. Okay, yeah, I, I'll bring up. <laughs> it's not really death metal, but uh, Scott from Carnifex mm-hmm. and Trevor Sternad, obviously. Right. Uh, okay, so Scott, I just filmed with him like last week for the next one. Uh, right. I tried, I tried getting him on the podcast for like two years. Couldn't, couldn't get a hold of Carnifex, man. They were huge into me getting into extreme music, and uh, it was really funny. One day, I just reached out. I was like, "Hey, man, like, I really want to talk to you about X, Y, and Z." You know, and it didn't work out, but I, I made that connection, you know, and he came right. to my town like a couple of weeks. He, he was coming through my town in a couple of weeks. I was like, hey, man, I got this documentary like we should meet up and it everything clicked, man, like it worked, you know, 
And uh, I met up with somebody I've been wanting to talk to for like a couple of years, man. You know, that's awesome. But yeah. <clears throat> Brendan, did you have any other ones you wanted to ask about? Like if they had time to think? Uh, I mean, I, I couldn't, uh, can't remember all of them right now. I, I, I watched like the, like, like three days ago, three, four days ago, but like that one was sticking out from like, yeah, that the drummer just disappearing. Um, oh man. Who, who did you interview from obituary again? I can't remember which member it was. Oh, uh, the guitar player. Um, uh, Trevor. Yeah. Oh, K- oh Kenny. Yeah. Trevor. He's Trevor. hilarious, man. Okay. I, I, if we're going to talk about him, <laughs> okay, that's what I was gonna ask because he he was funny. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay. So Trevor, we were filming with Municipal Waste that night. Uh-huh. Well, I was just me, and I, I was with a friend, my friend Mike, and he's like, "Yo, man, like you should get obituary part of this." I'm like, "What? Why?" He's like, "He's just chilling at the bar, drinking a beer. Like, you want me to go ask him?" I was like. <laughs> I was like, sure, man. And he, and he like walked over, like came in the little uh, band area with like a 20 ouncer. And he's like, what's up, guys? How are we doing? Like, what are you guys <laughs> up to? <laughs> he's like, what are you guys up to? Uh, he's like, he's like, this is pretty professional, man. I don't think I'm ready for this. <laughs> it was just really funny because he didn't even give a shit. Like, he just got behind the camera and the mic without like asking any questions. He's like, He's like, you're doing a documentary. This is cool. Let's go. <laughs> I, nice. I, don't if, I don't know if that was because he wasn't sober or like, because <laughs> obviously, like, I don't know. A band would be like, what is this about? Yeah, but he he didn't care at all. And I was like, that is. Right. Like, I was like, I respect the hell out of that. You know, no that's, agenda. That's pretty yeah. metal. <laughs> yeah. the stands. I was like, I was like, Trevor is like the embodiment of uh, what what the metal i don't know what the personality of this music is you know right but yeah he he was a really funny guy like trevor uh he was like i don't know how to explain it other than the fact that he was just really passionate about what he was talking about and it like shined through like he was very like even though he may have had like a, a beer or so like he was focused, you know, like when I was talking to him, like he, he, uh, he was super focused on like giving a a really cool and interesting answer, you know? Yeah. I, I, he stood out to me. Like, uh, his interview really stood out to me. And and it's just funny on how that one came about because like a lot of the interviews or a small portion of them, you know, um, like were coincidental based. Like, mm-hmm. like I was, like I was at a show and then I ran into somebody and then I had my camera with me type thing, or I was already set up. Um, and that was like one of them, you know? Right. I thought it was cool how you had like, uh, like some other genres in there. Like you had the the dude from, um, God, what's it called? Um, the thrash bands, uh, oh, Lich King. Ways. Lich, uh, yeah, Lich King. King. Dude, I love Witch King. Lich oh, King. Yeah. Those, those guys are so funny. I've been following them since their first album. And uh, I just love how they love ripping on black metal fans on social media and stuff. They're so funny. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and I want to like... New Hampshire, baby. There, there's a really funny thing that happened during that filming day. Um, there was this guy. Okay, so we're at this like little shady bar with like a pole in the middle of the stage. Like it, it packs like maybe like 50 people. Like Lich King is a pretty big band. And uh it was just a really crappy spot to have the show. Mm-hmm. And anyway, they had like this. If you look at the footage, like the lighting is like out of control, like in a good way. Like, like they showed up, like they were playing a stadium, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> but that wasn't even the funniest part. Um, it was the fact that like this random guy that was like a daily at the bar showed up, wasted. He had like a cowboy hat on, and basically. Uh, and basically, like, he just got in this conversation with the singer, Zach. Like, before the show, he's like, oh, you're in a band? Like, that's cool. Like, like I'll <laughs> check you out. Like, what time are you guys playing at? And, like, by the end of the night, they were, like, best friends. Like, like the dude, like, the, the dude, like, let him borrow his, like, cowboy hat during the set. Like, <laughs> it, like you, it was just really funny. Like, they just, 
I don't know. Like <laughs> the the guy, the daily, like was just an instant fan, you know. Like he didn't he didn't know that Lich King was about to get on stage and just tear it up, you know. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. I love I love that. I love like the randoms when the uh, bands play bars. I w- was at a uh, a friend of mine's gig for a band called uh, Moldering Vibrations. Uh, it's a grindcore band, and it was in this like random ass bar in East San Diego in the middle of nowhere, and uh, there were all these bar flies that were just like locals that are already drunk there when people started showing up for the gig and stuff. And like partway through the show, some of them just started stumbling into the pit, like barely able to stand and just like getting knocked around. And stuff. <laughs> it was pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. I think there's nothing, nothing better than going to like a, a really crappy house. Show. Yeah. Yeah. That stuff's like something else. Like mm-hmm. Crappy basement shows, man. That that's, that's where I have the most fun. Yeah. Michelle, yeah. Yeah, like like no expectations, like just just show up and just be like uh, I don't know, so, assault assaulted by echoes and bad noise. <laughs> I was I went to this uh, venue the other day. It's, I, I guess you can call it a venue. It's called Till Two. It's in San Diego, and it's literally a bar. But I didn't know that, so I bought tickets to see. Have you ever heard of a band called Behold the Monolith? No, but I've heard. Uh, well, I haven't listened to them, but I've heard of that name. Okay, um, they're an LA-based band. You should check them out. They're sick. You, you probably dig them. Um, and uh, so I, I get there and I see the stage, and it's literally like I—it's the smallest stage I've ever seen in my entire life. I've never seen a stage that small. <laughs> I, I can the band even fit on this thing? And like, luckily they're a three-piece because if they were a four-piece, they may not have fit on that stage. <laughs> and I was like, how good can this possibly be? And then it ended up being like sweet as hell because the stage was tiny. So they were like right up to the front of the stage. And then I just went and stood right at the front. And I was like two feet from the, like the lead singer. So we were making eye contact, like the whole, the whole set. And honestly, the sound was pretty like good as being such a small space, but that's probably because it was just blasting straight into my face. But mm-hmm. honestly, it, it ended up being like a private show. It felt like a private show. Cause I was right at the front. They were right there. It was cool. It was actually really cool. I would go back there. Yeah. That, that's cool, man. Because like I've seen, I don't know. I, I think there's something special about like not not seeing a band when like you're looking upwards. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like there's some sort of like uh, right. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. Other, other than the fact that it's, you know seeing somebody at the same level as you, is right? A, a little bit more relatable. Intimate. Oh yeah, it's just relatable too. I mean, like mm-hmm. you don't. You don't you don't think they have like ego or anything, you know, like it just feels uh, like natural, you know, right, like you're yeah. like your next door neighbor just decided to start playing music and you showed up versus <laughs> yeah, like, <right>. versus <laughs> like, you know, looking up at somebody that's like singing like Dio. Right. There's like stage lights and like everything, massive stage and the props and yeah, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. Beauty and simplicity, man. That's it. Definitely. I uh my my local spot is uh, a place in San Diego called uh, Brick by Brick, and that's where. Oh like, yeah, I, I've heard of them. Go there. No, I've it's, heard of it, but I haven't went there. Okay, yeah, it's like a twelve minute drive from my house. Um, it's everything comes through there. That that's where that concert that's got like two hundred stab wounds, undead, and undead, and all that stuff is playing. But they always charge like stupidly cheap prices, so I I always go. And I saw Primitive Man there for twelve dollars. And they played what? with um, Jarhead Fertilizer, Primitive Man. Um, God, who else was it, Brendan? I told you. Um, you love them. Uh, the other band. God, I'm trying to think of who it oh. was. Um, you talked about them in the last interview. I'm trying to think who it was. Uh, they got the really high-pitched screech vocals, really, really heavy. Um, uh, oh, my God. God. It's going to drive me crazy. Um, <laughs> Body Void. Body Void. Oh, it was Body, yeah, body it was Void. Bo- body Void, Primitive Man, um, Jarhead Fertilizer, and some other really good band from the West Coast for 12 bucks. That's crazy. I, I don't even understand how that's even doable. Like, how do you, I know. you pay the bands? Like, a dollar? I know. It's crazy. It makes no sense whatsoever. But I'm like, all right, I'll, I'll be there. I don't well, understand maybe, it. <laughs> maybe it just comes down to the fact that they would rather have the, the shows, like, sold out type thing. Mm. Right. Yeah, it was packed. It was absolutely packed, which was cool. And sometimes I've realized when 
when at least recently when when it comes down to attend attendance at these type of shows if there's like two good shows during a week uh it seems like you know a person's gonna pick one or the other right uh, but if you yeah if you charge twelve dollars like, you'd be going every show a week you know right. that's like that's the thing it's like it's hard not to go to shows there because it's always between like 10 and 25 bucks almost always i'm like this is stupid this is too cheap but you're like bankrupting me like i, I yeah. <laughs> and, and then you, and then you're like well and then it comes down to you being like all right well now i can pay a lot and like merchandise and buy like a whole bunch you make up for it you know what i mean exactly yeah and and like i don't really drink at shows or anything so i don't spend much on beer so it's like i'll buy a vinyl or buy merch or something like that yeah yeah uh, but then again, I think it comes down um, to the reasoning of why people of this genre make the music. You know what I mean? It's not for the money. Like they'll pay. Right. They'll they'll play for twelve dollars. Like they don't care. They'll play for two. You know? Right. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. As long as they get fat at the end of the day and they have gas to get there, they're going to keep doing it. You know? And right. that's, I mean, that's that's what I've learned. I saw um, you interviewed him in the documentary. Actually, uh, I saw I Hate God. Uh, there with Mismore, and they charged like eighteen bucks. Yeah, oh it's like, my god, that's a big pay, name band. I would pay like 30, 40. Yeah, easy. I, I love. I hate God. By the <coughs> way, if you ever get the chance to see a Mismore live, do it. Oh, they, yeah. oh, they, yeah. They they blew my mind, dude. They like I love. I like. I hate God a lot, and I've never seen them, and I was super excited for them. But like Mismore, like they 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 put it on. They were great. Well, well, I'm gonna make this. I mean, for you doing this podcast, I'm gonna hook you up with AOM. AOM? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, I've talked to him before. Really? Yeah. Well, that would um, be awesome. Yeah, I have his email and stuff. I'll reach out to him. That'd be great. He's uh, yeah, I'm a big fan. I lo- love love him. And like, <laughs> I, fo- I follow him on Instagram. Do you see that like super wholesome picture of him with the groundhogs? No, I didn't. But that's really funny. It's really funny. He's uh. I've had a lot of guests on my podcast, 130 something guests, wow. but I would say he uh he's definitely one that sticks out sticks out because he like really I don't know, he's got a very unique personality. Like he's very reserved, I could tell. Very mm-hmm. quiet. But when, when it comes down to his music, like he's <laughs> he's serious, you know. He he right, knows yeah. his stuff and he his music means a lot more than just like a little horror film. Like it definitely it's, it's literally his music is about his struggle to you know i don't know understand the meaning of life like literally right. that's that's what his music music is about right you know? yes it's some there's a lot to it and you can feel that it's it's there's a depth yeah yeah I, I mean and that was really cool to talk to him about and then seeing it you know at uh psycho las vegas was really cool oh he played that yeah yeah he did. oh that's cool nice I, I I think that he went on two, so like he did a date at Psycho Las Vegas, and then he went to uh, like L.A. and stuff like that. So I, with I Hate God, so maybe that was the same same thing you were talking about. It probably was. It was around the same time. Yeah, because yeah. I I think they like branched out. They did a little run based off of that two. Uh, <laughs> it's up off of that tour. <laughs> So I just realized we are coming up to the hour and a half mark. Um, before you go, is there anything that you want to like sort of put out there people need to be aware of or ready to check out or like what should people be looking out for? Yeah, your podcast, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think uh, I don't, I don't. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, other than the fact that this was a, a great uh, conversation, I, I, I think, uh, I think this was something that I don't know. It was very interesting being on somebody else's podcast because now I'm like, wow, I want to do hour and a half podcasts. These are a little bit more in depth than what I do on my show, which I uh, I don't know. It's a little bit. It's different, you know. Right. Nice. You get to, uh, you get to dive a little bit deeper in, yeah. in an hour and a half than forty five minutes. That's Definitely. what we like. The deep yeah, dive. We used to not have a time limit, and they were like, some of them were like two hours, and like, no, it's too much. Like, we have to yeah. at least have like not ninety minutes is like pushing it. We better cut it off there, type things. So, but yeah, I mean, it's like you really get to know someone in ninety minutes because you get past the initial like, okay, do you have to talk about these topics? 
like they're on the show to talk about the album or you know what i mean and then once that's out of the way then you can talk about whatever yeah mm-hmm. no I, I the second like I don't know. I liked it because we like went into video games and stuff, and I was like, "Man, I'm like that, that." I was like, "I was, I was like, I was not expecting that." But I'll talk. Uh, Tom, I'll literally talk to anybody about video games for like an hour. Like, <laughs> yeah. We had uh, one guest on. It hasn't come out yet. It should be up Monday, and uh, we only talked about music for like a third of the interview. I'm like, oh shit, <laughs> whoops! Like that was like uh, we ended up talking like completely derailed. There's like a 15 minute period talking about uh, Anthony Bourdain. Mm-hmm. um yeah it, it, went, it went off the rails but it was a good it was a good chat that's good man i i did one of those recently with a band called bather um oh yeah yeah Ohio? yeah and uh yeah i love that band the the vocalist is like a really good photographer and i like found out about that like he does a lot of cool portraits and like literally three quarters of the conversation was just photography and then we we're like oh yeah so you're in a band called bather <laughs> that's cool when you have that Dude, connection yeah, that's, con- james yeah. check him out that that's that's death core you can get behind let me see i look him up right now all right so just before i uh do that let's uh wrap things up so thank you so much for coming on the show uh, as honestly awesome talking to you this was a really fun chat like one of the my favorites we've had in a while um yeah great talk oh yeah thank you so um, much yeah it was great. and it was great honestly good. we'd love to have you back on so i think but the idea we discussed about doing an end of year wrap up, we'd love to have you on as a guest if you'd be interested in that. Yeah, oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, let's, right. uh, let's do it. Cool. Everyone else, uh, thank you so much for listening, and we'll be back next week with another guest. <laughs>